RO. I'll just write it down. Before that, I'll add this web element in my object repository. Okay. Now you have got two types of properties. One which you see in the spy and one which you see in the object repository. Fine. So the properties which are there in the spy, they are known as RO properties. And the properties which are there in object repository, they are known as TO properties. Test object properties. Okay. This is the runtime object properties. And these are the test object properties. What's the difference between them? Well, suppose I open gmail.com after one month. Maybe this text changes. The text on the application can change. Fine. So the RO properties, they actually come from the application. So they can change. They can change depending on application. But the TO properties, they come from the object repository. They do not change. Until or unless you do not change them. Okay. So TO properties, they will not change. Like that. Until you change it. Okay. Until a tester changes the properties. Okay. Because on suppose 1st of January, I go to Gmail and store that text into this object repository. Then these are my, this is my TO property object. These are, these are the TO properties. You see that? Out here it is written test object details. Right? So the properties present in OR in a very nutshell, they are the expected values. The PO properties, they are the expected values. And the RO properties, they are the actual values which come from the application. And you can compare the actual and the expected value to uh, actually report an error or whatever it is. Fine. Right. So suppose what I'll do is I'll drag this object out here in the code. Okay. I'll drag this object. This is the text object. Fine. And in the end, you have the click function. You move it. Okay. If you right now it says that there is a browser, there is a page, there is a web element. Fine. If you put a dot in front of it, you will have lot of operations or functions available. One of them is click, which you know that it will click on it. But the other or others you do not know right now. Okay. Right. Among these functions, if you look at these functions, these are the functions. Now, if you actually spy the same object, that is this object, then in spy, you will have all the RO properties. These are runtime object properties. There is a properties tab over here and there is an operations tab over here. If you go to the operations tab, these are all the functions which you can perform with this particular web element object. Okay. The same functions, they come up over here when you put a dot. These types of functions are same as the functions which you get in the spy under operations. Okay. And one of the functions which is related to every object is get RO property. Okay. And you give the property name and it will get it. Get RO property means get the runtime object property. Where is the runtime object property? Inside the browser, inside the application. Runtime object property is the actual value. 
right? So suppose if I go to my Gmail and I spy this, so this, these all are RO properties. In the RO property inner text, the text of that element is present. So if I write over here, get the RO property inner text, this will retrieve the property from the application. And suppose I write over here actual value. Right? So this actual value is getting from the application with the help of the function get RO property. Every object has many functions associated with it, but get RO property is there with every object. Right? So if I write over here print actual value, this will print the text from the application. You see that? Now, if I write over here browser dot page dot web element dot get to property is also a function associated with every object get to property inner text that means get the property from the object repository if you look at and uh, take it in the expected value so the object repository will have the expected value and actual value will be there from the application so I'll write over here print expected value and run this. So when you run this, both actual and expected values are printed. Only thing is the actual value comes over from the action, it is the RO property. The expected value is the TO property coming from the object repository. Now similarly, as, as I told you, this thing, I get RO property is there with every object. For example, this is the page object. Browser this dot page gmail email from Google. Okay. If I put a dot over here, I will get the get arrow property for the page as well. If you spy, if you spy your page, for example, this is the web element, but if you click on the page, you will see the properties of the page. The arrow properties of the page, the title of the page is this, this is the URL in the page right now and or everything. If you go to the operations, you will have set of operations available in with this space, a set of functions out of which one of the functions which is always there is get arrow property, this one. Fine. So if you write get arrow property title, title was an arrow property in the spy, right? We saw. This will get the title of the page. If you run this from line number 10, this will give you the title of the page. You see that? Okay. So what I mean to tell you is that every object has many functions associated with it. Out of them, get RO and get TO are there with every object. Okay. Similarly, the browser as well. From the browser dot get RO property. If you spy the page again, and instead of selecting the web element, you select the browser. Right? There is an auto property called application version, which tells you the version of my browser and all everything. So I copy this and I write here. I'll give the version. I'll get the version of my browser. So when you run right click from line number ten and run this, this will print the title of the page and the browser version on which you are working. Okay, so this is how you work, right? Look, the thing is not learning the functions, but it is the it, the most important thing is developing the knack, developing the knack on how to work with QTP, how to investigate and explore things. Okay, this tool is very vast. Even like after working on it for five six years, I am also not aware of it completely. Okay, it's quite vast. It's very vast, but you have to, uh, you can say you have to have the knack, 
So that's what I was talking about. For example, if I go to the operation, if you start reading the functions, the first function is capture bitmap. If you read the description, it says that save the screen capture of the object as a PNG or a BMP image depending on the specified extension. That means if I want to take the screenshot of an object, you can use this function capture bitmap. This capture bitmap function is there for the web element, it's there for the page as well, and it's there for the browser as well. Okay, and for the browser, you see that there is also a function called back. Navigate to the previous page in the browser history. That means if you want to simulate the back button click of the browser, you can call this function like this. Browser Google dot back. You see the back is also available over there. Fine. So that's how you need to read. For example, what I'll do is I'll capture the screenshot. I go like this. Right. So if I write over here browser dot page dot web element. Okay, and I put a dot in front of it, then I again get a inbuilt function called capture bitmap. Now these are not the VB functions. These are the functions given by QTP. Earlier in VB scripting, the functions which I taught you were the VB functions. Fine, so if I write capture bitmap over here, fine, and I give the file name that I save the file in C drive as temp.png, comma 1. 1 means that if the temp.png is already existing, then overwrite it. Fine. So what will happen is that if you to run this from line number 13 and go to your C drive, you will see that temp1 dot, uh, what's the name of the file, temp png temp.png is there. Okay. It's a little distorted, the image has come distorted. Hold on. What I'll do is I'll write over here wait 5. That means wait for 5 seconds. If you want to introduce a little bit of force delay, you can write this wait statement. Okay. And you write on this, right click on the line number 14 and run this from the step. So meanwhile it waits, I'll maximize the browser. Fine, hold on. And once you now look at your C drive, you see that it just captured the screenshot of that particular web element. browser page then capture bitmap function is available at the web element level at the page level and at the browser level as well so if I take it at the browser level, I will get the screenshot of the complete page. If I write dot capture bitmap in a file, Temp one. You see that temp one dot png. 